What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and we have a brand new seasonal summon in Empires and Puzzles. It is the Lunar New Year with two new legendary heroes. And do we have our first overpowered passive ability? Well, after I go over the heroes and give them grades, I'm going to talk about that and what to do about it. But first, download Bloodline Heroes of Lithus, a mobile RPG action fighting game where you can marry your champions to create new and unique hybrids. Use the link in the description to start with some free stuff, including gold and diamonds. And I'd be honored to have you join my server so you can play alongside me. Simply click on your profile, settings, then change your server to S462. See you hopefully soon. All right, let's go ahead and start with Zhao Tu. That's a five-star fire hero. I really like the art in these, especially because they're changing the card border. And I really like what they've done with that. It makes it kind of cool to like collect some of these heroes now, especially because there's so many of them. You can't possibly use all of them. So it's kind of nice just as a card collector. I like stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Props to you, Small Giant Games, for doing that. Um... This uh, particular hero is of the Druid class. It's not one of the best. It's not one of the worst. I like it. I think it's underrated, but I've never really been able to put into words why other than... Um, you know what it's like to fight against a hero in the Druid class and it's uh, creating minions out of nowhere. It's just, it's just kind of cool. I like it. Uh, it is part of the Lunar Year family, which is going to have an effect. Um, the, lunar, the Lunar family features different Lunar Year animal heroes. Uh, and so it grants a different bonus to the members of the Lunar Year family when paired with at least one other Lunar Year hero, which is this. The hero gives the following Lunar Year rabbit bonus to the members of the Lunar Year family, plus 5% mana generation. So uh, in case this doesn't make sense, what this means is it's not like the other passives in families where when you have one, two, or three heroes, it gives an effect it is giving this particular animal bonus to the other Lunar Year heroes. So, of course, there will be probably more coming out in the future. And that means that this hero would give that bonus. Plus 5% mana generation. And that's a great one. That is a really great one. Uh, the members of this family have additional perks in the Lunar Year event. So, do take note of that. Here's the controversial part. <laughs> the Disable Minion Abilities Passive. Which says, attacks and abilities of all minions owned by enemies are disabled. This hero nerfs all minions on the other side of the board to nothing. <laughs> they don't attack. They don't give any effects. They're just kind of there. And uh, they don't add much to the board. Now, some people are thinking this is too strong. And I'm going to get back to this. Let's table this. At the end, we'll have a discussion about whether this passive is too strong. But Zhao Tu has 959 attack, 897 defense, and 1777 HP. With the max power preview off, that's 834, 799, and 1439. But I like to have it on because the question here is, is this hero worth putting your resources in at max? Uh, Re reverse recovery is the special. It's the average speed special. Deals 655% damage to the target. So it's an average speed sniper. That's not usually good. There are no average speed snipers in this game that are really used a lot right now. So that's not promising. Uh, the target and the nearby enemies resist healing and receive 250 damage per each resisted healing for four turns. So that can be kind of sneaky. And I would say probably better for offense than defense, where snipers are typically better for offense anyway. Uh, where you can choose your target um, instead of letting it up to the AI. But in this one in particular, because it's um, uh, affecting the target and nearby enemies, also the AI can be kind of stupid with that and constantly be choosing some hero on the end, which only affects two heroes then instead of three. Just take note of that. It's easier to control whenever you're on offense. But that can be kind of sneaky. So this is an offensive hero because you want to take it against a defense that has some kind of healing and you probably, it's probably going to be especially strong against heal over time types of heroes where they're healing every turn. And so can you imagine a heal over time hero going off on the other side and then they're receiving 250 damage per per turn based on that? That's really strong. That's really awesome. Um, so, you know, do take note of that. You know, I'm thinking of like costume Mother North or something is, you know, where that might come up. So 
uh, do take note. That could be potentially strong, but only on offense. Probably in raids, wars, um, tournaments, possibly. But I don't see this really being a defensive hero. It's too slow at average speed to be a sniper anywhere on the defense. Uh, there's nothing really about this that's going to be good against the Titan or anything like that. So what do I think about this hero? Well, as it is currently built, I think the special is quite weak. And typically, I would give it a lower grade because of that. I mean, it's a sniper at average speed, and I already think snipers have a hard time. But it's got this super strong passive. <laughs> like, you can just throw this. It doesn't almost matter what the special is. You can throw it on your team if you're going against uh, a heavy minion meta and just undo what the other team is trying to do if they've got a lot of minion synergies. And it's constant, right? Because it's a passive. So that really brings the grade way back up. But as I'm going to talk about at the end, there's already like rumors and rumbles of like, oh my gosh, is Empires and Puzzles going to nerf this ability? And if they do, that's going to bring the grade of this hero back down. So I'm going to give it a grade based on what the hero is today. Understanding that if they nerf this, this hero is going to be a lot worse because I think this disable minion ability is passive is its only saving grace at the moment. The special is kind of cool, but it's not very good. It's not going to stand up to a lot of the overpowered heroes today. So I'd say Xiao Tu is a B. And what's holding it up to a B is that passive. So if they do nerf this one day, this is not a B hero. This is probably more like a C hero. That's my opinion. But let me know what you think in the comments. In fact, I think I'd have to assess it then. But I ha I'd have to think. And it depends on how much they nerf the passive. This could even be below a C hero, but we'll wait and see on that. Next up, we have Lao Hu, a five-star holy hero of the monk class. Not one of the better classes. It's fine. It's whatever. It's just if you're giving it talents, you're doing it to boost those um, uh, base stats and everything. Uh, Lunar Year family bonus. Uh, this one is the tiger bonus, and that is an increase of 10% attack. So take note of that. We've got this passive again, which again... <laughs> Just like with the previous hero, this is what's boosting it and holding it up. Let's take a look at the uh, base stats and special. 920 attack, 945 defense, and 1778 HP. This is with the max power preview on if you throw all your resources at it. If you don't, it's 826 attack, 786 defense, and 1483 HP. Fierce Fu Jiao Pai is the special at fast speed. Deals 605% damage to the target. And again, this is another sniper. At least this one is fast speed. So the average speed one I have trouble with, although, you know, of course, again, on average, you can put a mana troop on it and make it functionally fast. But it's nice that this one is already at fast speed. 605% damage is a lot of damage, but it needs to be that to kind of keep up with all the overpowered heroes today. And then boost the caster's health by 50% of the damage dealt. That's kind of cool. I like that. I think that's going to be good. But... Again, with all the overpowered heroes, a special like this just isn't going to hold up today. I think there's the chance that this special could be just slightly better than the last one we looked at because it is already at fast speed. Um, and I, I like the boosting of the health at fast speed. It's not giving it to everybody, which would make it a, a good special. I wish it would give it to everybody, but that's okay. It gives it to him. I think there's more ability to actually use this in a defense, but still with the heroes they have out today, if you have any of the good heroes they've released within the last year, this is probably not one you're putting on defense. It's more of offense and it's not quite as good of a specialist as the last one we looked at, which you can really mess up some synergies. This one, you're just straight up like trying to kill an opponent. It's fine, but there's not a lot of heroes you can kill with a 605% damage to a target anymore unless you're just trying to finish them off. So you're really going to have to depend on having heroes on your team that are doing a lot of like area of effect damage first and then just use Lao Hu to finish them off and he'll probably stay alive. I do like the resilience. I think he's going to be fine, um, but I don't think he, I certainly don't think he's overpowered. He's not even really like great. He's, he's just a good sniper. Um... And so I, I think that with this passive, which again is everything to this hero, he's not nearly as good without it. 
I'm going to give Lao Hu a B plus only because he's acting more like a traditional sniper that's actually killing enemies. He's staying alive, but he's got this amazing passive as well. I like the faster speed. Quite honestly, I think he's very equivalent to the previous hero, but this one, um, since it is just a little bit faster, gets a little bit of an edge. If they nerf this again, though, this is not a great sniper. Again, would probably be a C or lower. I don't know what they're going to do about this because if they nerf the passive, then these heroes are not good. They're in trouble. <laughs> They've either got to leave this on here and just leave the heroes alone, which um, personally, and this might not be a popular opinion, but I think they should probably leave it alone because otherwise they're going to trash their heroes. And the seasonal summon's not going to be good at all. And they're going to have to wait until the next time around to put out heroes that are actually going to have good specials. It's probably why the specials are actually powered down because the passive is so powered up. So let's take a minute now to talk about this passive because there's already rumblings of uh, nerfing this. It is too strong as a passive. I mean, I, th I think it's too strong. Um, but... Uh, because, I mean, think about it. Think about, like, what is happening on the other side of the battlefield. It is It is totally disabling the minion strategy. It, like, just, like, there's been no overarching, general, just, you know, blanket nerfing of minions from any hero like this. It's absolutely incredible. It's It's too strong for a passive on any kind of normal, good, special hero. But since these are heroes that don't have great specials, it kind of balances it out. So in my opinion, in my opinion, I would like to see them run with this for a little bit. Don't snap nerf this. I think that's going to be an unpopular opinion because I feel like people are getting really uptight about this right now. But I would just like to see it play out at first. Because these are not going to be good heroes on defense. If you put them on defense and you like, you're just not gonna bring your minions against this guy, right? Or the other one. And they're not great on defense anyway, because the snipers with the artificial intelligence choosing who to pick don't do a great job at that. On offense, yeah, you're never gonna see it. You're never gonna feel it nerfing and shutting down opposing minions. Um, and so you're not actually gonna feel the pain <laughs> of what these heroes are doing to you. You're just going to see somebody's fighting your defense and then uh, it dies and that's that's that, right? Um, they don't do anything particularly special on offense to except to mess up your minion strategy on defense. I kind of think, and not everybody's going to get this. They're a little easier to get, which is another reason why I think the specials are powered down. Because you can use your um, just regular uh, tokens to be able to summon for this. Uh, you know, the free epic hero tokens. Um and the chances, you know, we didn't even look at the chances, but let's go look at the chances. The chances typically in the seasonal summons are better. So you can see a legendary seasonal hero is a 0.8%. Actually, it's been higher in the past for seasonal heroes. So, you know, that's actually, you know, not a lot. So not a lot of people are going to get these particular heroes. So that's something to note as well. Um, so that's my opinion. I would like to let it play out. I want to see how it does. If after maybe a couple of months of us playing with this, we feel like it's ruining the game, then sure, let's talk about a nerf. But I do not like whenever they release heroes and then they go and nerf them. People are making decisions about whether to summon or not for these, whether to level them up or not for these. Um, and it just feels bad to put that investment in it and have it nerfed. Let's give it a minute. Just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will catch you in the next one.